All right, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. Uh, so here is the summary of uh, some key points that we covered today. Enrollment records, that's SENR records, uh, SSID enrollment is another uh, way to phrase that. Enrollment records must be posted first uh, in the submission order in order to establish ownership of the SSID and submit any subsequent records in the student profile. Uh, next, demographic information is required for all students and state level matching cannot be performed without the demographic record. And that is the student information or SINF record. LEAs do not need to update the English language acquisition status of incoming students transferring from another California public school whose status already exists in CalPADS. Uh, the ELOS carries over. Uh, the initial LPAC results, the two results that uh, come from the initial LPAC are EL and IFEP. Uh, and these two statuses are automatically transmitted to CalPADS uh, from the TOMS system, the Testing and Operation Management System. Uh, student age, students age 22 or older must have a current ELA status, uh, current uh, status of Adele, including students who are EL, uh, IFEP and RFEP students are exempt from this rule. The Adele status is in place because uh, folks who are age 22 years or older are not eligible to take the LPAC. Um, the IFEP and RFEP statuses are uh, the results of the LPAC that state English proficiency. Um, and so if they have uh, gotten those results from the LPAC, uh, they can be exempt from that rule. Uh, program eligibility is counted if the program start date is on or before census day, and there is no end date uh, or the end date is after census day. Remember there are, um, there are two, uh, exceptions to the rule for inclusion in reports 1.17 and 1.18 with the NSLP and direct certification dates. And then finally, the meet plan SWIDs uh, and serve files for students with disabilities are submitted from CalPAD, from the SEDS to CalPADS through the API process. And that is automated. Uh, so there should be no uh, action needed on the part of CalPADS coordinators to submit the special education record types um, other than correcting errors and confirming reasonability. All right, these are our suggested milestones for fall one this academic year. Uh, from now through census day, you should be completing data population in your local systems in the local SIS and SEDS um, and obtaining SSIDs for new students. Also from now through November 8th, you should be submitting and posting records in CalPADS. Uh, that includes the SENR, SINF, SCLA, and SPRG. Um, this is uh, the graphics a little out of date. Uh, it also includes the four special education record type with the meet plan SWIDs and serve records. Um, from now through November 8th, you should also be reviewing your errors and reconciling CalPADS with the student information system as needed. Uh, but from November 11th through November 29th, you should be really be uh, looking at those errors as well as your uh, anomalies uh, in detail and reviewing snapshot reports and updating records as needed. It's a reasonable goal that by that uh, November 29th date, uh, your errors should be resolved, at which point uh, from December 2nd to December 6th, you should be sending your reports to local data stewards, site leaders, report reviewers, those folks from those other departments, uh, English Learner Services, the National School Lunch Program staff, uh, special education staff. You should be sending your reports off to those folks um, in order for them to verify the accuracy of the data and to approve them. Then from uh, December 9th till December 13th, you should be working to LEA approve the submission. Uh, that initial certification deadline date is uh, December 13th. We then have the amendment window uh, where you should be, you know, making minor changes to records and getting that SELPA approval of fall one and the final certification deadline for LEA and SELPA approval for fall one is January 24th, 2025. All right, these are some additional resources that will be helpful in uh, populating data uh, and going through the fall one submission. 
First, we have Bridge, uh, the learning management system that we use here at CSIS. Every LEA is allotted two Bridge accounts. Um, since you're all in the room today, I assume that you are able to access Bridge. But if you have other folks at your LEA that uh, you believe should be attending some of these live trainings and you have an account available for them, um, please send them to Bridge. Uh, ask them to submit a ticket requesting a Bridge account. If they are unable to get a Bridge account, uh, if you know you have two uh, folks at your LEA who already have Bridge accounts and who need them, you aren't and you're not able to get a third. The CSIS YouTube training channel is an excellent resource uh, for those folks. And for you, if you would prefer to view this content in a kind of an on-demand way where you're able to pause, uh, go back um, and review uh, demonstrations like Kyron just went through, um, this session is being recorded and should go on to the CSIS YouTube training channel um, shortly here. Uh, also included is the fall one reporting and certification and advanced uh, trainings. This is the link for the CalPads user manual. Uh, I think we saw a lot of the effectiveness of the CalPads user manual, both in the slides that we presented and in Kyron's demonstration. It's very quickly becoming the go-to uh, resource, the first stop uh, for all things CalPads. And then we do submit those CELA records. There is a lot of uh, information that centers around uh, the English language acquisition status. And so we have the website for the LPAC listed in the uh, resources slide here for you as well. These are your avenues to obtain support. The web form is the fastest way to obtain support. Here you're able to submit a ticket for the CSIS client services team and we can uh, do an investigation and respond with guidance that's very specific to your scenario. Uh, we also have email and phone as ways to uh, contact support. However, the web form is the fastest way. When you send an email or uh, provide a voicemail uh, to that phone number there, those emails and voicemails are transcribed into tickets that are then responded to in the same way that the web form is responded to. So the email and phone add an extra step with the transcription and so are a bit slower than uh, submitting a service desk ticket through that web form. Uh, this is a link to sign up for the CSIS CalPads listserv. The CSIS CalPads listserv is a great way for LEAs to obtain support uh, from each other as well as the CSIS client services team and the CDE uh, who are in that listserv um, quite frequently. Uh, this listserv is a two-way form of communication and so other LEAs that use similar systems, have similar enrollment counts, are working with similar uh, circumstances and scenarios, are able to support each other. Um, and so CSIS Listserv is a great way uh, to communicate with other LEAs, CSIS and the CDE. And thank you everyone for attending the Fall 1 Data Population live training at CSIS. Thank you so much, Kyron, for uh, the fantastic demo today. Thank you, Marshall, for all your help behind the scenes.